Morning! Hope you're doing really, really well. What I want to do today is a follow up uh, on episode one of Migration Gravel Race, where I showed you what it was like to do a four day gravel stage race, or day one of a four day gravel stage race, in Kenya in the Maasai Mara. Now, when I flew out to Kenya, I had the intention of making an episode per stage. Uh, it's a beautiful country the race that I've been looking forward to all year, but in the end, that just didn't seem possible to me. The race was so difficult and self-filming whilst trying to race a very difficult stage and to tell the story in some sort of interesting and concise way, it just became, it was really, really difficult. And at the end of the day, no matter how much I love you guys and YouTube, um, I was there to race. That's why I was there. The race was the most important thing. So after stage one, I decided I was gonna to have to change the way that I filmed stuff. I couldn't do all these pieces to camera telling the story as it unfolded. I knew that I would have to sit down tell you the story when I got back and put in some of the footage and the scenery that I'd got whilst I was over there. So if you haven't seen stage one, then click up here, you can have a look. The footage is kind of rough and raw but I think it gives quite a good idea of what it was like racing over there. Uh, the story I'm going to tell today should have a few more images of the animals and the scenery and stuff I hope. I mean it was so hard to race it and to film. I also felt really sick more of which I'll tell you about in a minute so yeah check out the footage let me tell you the story grab a cup of tea sit down and settle in. <coughs> So stage two was the queen stage. And this one we knew would be the very most difficult, the hardest, the longest, with the most climbing. We were all sort of slightly nervous about this one. Well, I can't speak for everyone else. I was slightly nervous about it. It was 175 kilometers off road with nearly 3000 meters of climbing or something. And if you've ever ridden a gravel bike, you know that 175 kilometers can take quite a long time to cover depending on the terrain, I guess. Um, anyway, the race is set off really, really fast from the gun. It was almost like a cyclocross race. So um, everyone would be straight out the gate. Well, there wasn't a gate. Everyone would just ride off really, really quick. And uh, for a lot of people, the aim was to stay at the front, stay in a little group, um, benefit from the drafting possibilities of that. And well, you know, just go faster essentially. Lael Wilcox didn't tend to do that. She would um, let everyone go, tear it off up the road, and then just kind of chug, 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 start overtaking people and catching up and eventually doing very, very well. But um, I decided that I was gonna get a few sort of, they're not free miles, cause it's still bloody hard work, but I decided that I was gonna go fast at the start and then settle in. So that's what I did on day two. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before I started feeling really, really nauseous. So, I feel very, very sick today. It's very, very difficult to eat and drink. I struggled to eat my dinner last night. I was forced down as much breakfast as I could this morning. I'm squeezing in gels when I can, but it's a big old struggle. So I'm just going slow. Slow, slow, slow. Now, I don't know if it was the altitude, because it's really high there, or the getting up at 5 a.m., because I hate getting up, but I felt really sick. Like, really, when you're like, I mean, I didn't puke, but I felt like I was gonna puke. So that made riding a little bit difficult and I quickly realized I was gonna to have to let the, um, the fast people at the front go and just focus on, well, surviving really. I felt so sick that it was almost impossible to eat. So all I did was que keep squeezing gels into my mouth and sipping water. I couldn't really chew on anything, but I knew that if I didn't take these gels on, then the situation would get far, far worse. It wasn't long before we came to a really, really beautiful climb, uh, a big red road uh, going up the hillside. It was so gorgeous, but I felt so sick. And all I could do was make little mini bargains with myself. I told myself, just get to the first water station and, um, well, not then you can quit. I just decided all I had to do 
was just keep moving any forward movement was progress just keep moving don't stop ever and get to the first water point so that is what i did boy was it a struggle i mean oh my god it was such a struggle but we climbed up 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 it got more and more and more beautiful as we went higher up into the highlands there were far-reaching views and sort of almost reminded me a little bit of the alps with pastures and animals grazing and very small little um, farm buildings and stuff like that. It was absolutely brilliant. The climb went on and on and on and on and on and on, like forever. So thank God it was beautiful, but it was just so nice to be up there, just experiencing something that so few people would get to see. Unfortunately, both, whew, both my water bottles have bounced out. Less than ideal. Still got a bit of water in the pack, but had nutrition powder in there as well, so. Once I got to the first water stop, I managed to get some of these little packets of biscuits that were kind of like rich tea biscuits. Um, and they were so plain um, that they were actually quite pleasant to eat in the end. So I ate those, they settled my stomach and I started feeling a lot better and on I continued. The next target was aid station two, and if you didn't make it to aid station two by two o'clock, then um, you would have to take the shortcut home, home, well, not to Devon, you'd have to take the shortcut back to base camp, and that would mean that you got a DNF on that stage, I did not finish, and that would mean you were out of the race. Um, so I was kind of cruising along at this steady pace, just riding my own race, when I realised that I wasn't far from aid station two, but I didn't have much time left. At that point, I realised I was going to have to push on slightly, so I gave it a bit more beans and made it to aid station two with five minutes to spare. The guys manning the aid station even said to me, do you want to do the rest of it? Because it's only five minutes till the cutoff point. You could just go back to the base camp. And I was like, what? Hell yeah, I wanna do the rest of it. So on I went. I'm still going. I can't believe it. I've made the first checkpoint and then the second and final checkpoint. So stoked. After aid station two, the course got even more dramatically beautiful. Well, not more beautiful, because it was already beautiful. Beautiful in a different way. We went through this kind of, it almost was like, it reminded me of a plantation with beautiful flowers on each side, small children running out to wave and say, shambo. And it was just like really idyllic. Also, it was going downhill slightly, so maybe that's why I enjoyed it. But I was just so very glad that I made that decision to push forwards and make aid station two with enough time to continue and finish the rest of the ride. I've been fairly incapable of talking for the last, well, I mean, for nearly the whole ride. I've now been going for 11 and a half hours. I think I'm nearly back. Unfortunately, the last bit of the route is a climb. I eventually rolled across the finish line when it was nearly dark. I was in absolute pieces. Um, but I finished and many people didn't actually. I'm not sure the percentage of people that had to take the shortcut um, but certainly I was one of the last people to successfully complete that stage on that day. Um, I think it's only a little over half of the people who actually did it, so I feel proud of that, no matter how slow I was. Hey, I was sick. It's a really beautiful morning. Morning from the Mara. So on to stage three, I didn't have long to recover because I finished so late. Um, so I pretty much showered, ate, fell asleep, and then all of a sudden I was up again for stage three, which I'd been really looking forward to because I was told that it would be faster, flatter, and there would be more animals. Shama. Oops. 
Um, that really got me through stage two, the thought of stage three being a reward um, in the event. Obviously, it was still very difficult. Um, took me about six hours to do 127 kilometers and 1300 meters of climbing. But we did roll pretty quickly across these wonderful, vast open savannas with these kind of black mud roads. There were wildebeest and zebra. Was it wildebeest or were they kind of gazelles? There were some pretty cool animals to watch. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, there were some pretty savagely rocky sections when they lay a new road in some parts of the Masai Mara essentially they take a lorry load of fist sized rocks and just kind of dump them so when you're trying to ride over that it is slow going in the extreme I mean there's just no like freewheeling or free speed it was just every single crank was hard one so it was a challenging, challenging stage, but um, I, I, I did eventually get there by sticking to my own plan of riding my own race, getting it done and not worrying too much about other people. Maybe nearly there? I don't know. I don't want to look in case it's a massive downer. And there's miles left. So just keep riding. Three complete! Hooray! It was a real joy to finish mid-afternoon and be rewarded with a lovely cold Coca-Cola and a packet of crisps and to get to relax and enjoy the beautiful camp with a nice meal. So yeah, day three felt really, really good. I mean, hard. It's crazy that a six hour race <laughs> seems kind of easy because you did a 12 hour one the day before. I say easy, it wasn't easy, but anyway, anyway. It was good. Day four. Breakfast is going on. Got some coffee over here. Porridge, toast, eggs over here. Hydration bag. Morning from Kenya. Where I feel very sick. Hmm. This was a challenge. So this one was 163 kilometers, how much climbing? 1500 meters of climbing. And what else can I remember about this stage? Mainly that I just wanted to survive. Many, many people had not managed to complete previous stages due to crashes, mechanicals, or just running out of steam. So the fact that I was still in the GC meant a great deal to me and I just really wanted to make it across the finish line in one piece and within the time limit and uh, that ended up just being my main aim on day four. I was still in substantial pain, particularly my bum, which probably still has scars on it and my shoulders that were really, really hurting me. This bit is a bit annoying. Uh, everything hurts so much and it's such hard going. Um, but I did feel pretty good and I even got to ride with a couple of other people for a couple of kilometers. I rode the whole of the rest of the race on my own. when I turned up to the first aid station and was handed slices of juicy watermelon, pieces of oranges. It felt really, really good. And then off I rolled to begin the first and most significant climb, not the first climb, to, to do the most significant climb of the day. Here we go. That's when disaster struck. Small problem here, but 
I've got a dyno plug in there and I am gonna fix it. I somehow managed to get not one, but two punctures, really big ones in the side wall. And I just thought, no, let this not be the thing that ruins my whole bloody race. I've battled every other thing, sickness and, you know, finishing in near darkness to come this far and have it ruined by a flat tire. I mean, no. That was a bit of a drama. I've got two plugs in my tire now. Kindly Lurk from Fat Pigeon gave me one because I needed a different size. And then it wasn't sealing, wasn't sealing, wasn't sealing. Finally, did seal the CO2 valve thing has rattled itself apart and I'm missing a bit of that so I had to pump it. The tire is up but obviously I've got another 110k to go and I need to hope and pray that it stays up. For the rest of the day I rode very very gingerly just really really wanting to get to the finish without any more mishaps. I made sure to pick really good lines on the descents to not take any risks and just to really look out carefully for anything that could derail my plans to finish. So through willing it to be and some careful riding, I did roll across the finish line some eight or, na eight or nine hours later and boy did that feel good. I checked the results page um, immediately after the race and I came either fourth or fifth. I wasn't entirely sure. Since then, there seems to have been some cock up with the uh, live results. Something to do with the fact they used the same timing chips for the next race, Evolution Gravel Race. Uh, and there were just a few, well, there were, yeah. I came fourth or fifth. That's all I can tell you. I kind of wish I knew because Lael Win Wilcox came third. So if I came right after her, then hell yeah, claiming that one. But yeah, shame I can't give you a uh, definitive result. Fourth or fifth will do. I'm very proud to have finished at all. So yeah. After the race finished, the Maasai did a little presentation ceremony, giving medals to those who completed the whole race. <laughs> Um, I think it was just over half of the entrants who actually finished the race without any mishaps or any trouble. Well, I say without any trouble. It was a lot of trouble getting to the end. But anyway, I finished and felt really good about that. Uh, though I kind of still want to know if I was fourth or fifth. But yeah, it was such an amazing experience. It's taken me a little while to put this video together because I had a trip planned afterwards to Croatia. So that's the next video that I'll be editing. Um, and... Yeah, now I feel like I need another big target, another big adventure, another big stage race. I think I quite like this format of um, racing all day and then staying in a camp somewhere at night rather than carrying all your equip equipment and sleeping in a ditch. It appeals to me, I like it. Um, so I am gonna look for something else like that. If you can think of any, then do let me know. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, edit this together, and then uh, I can't remember. Uh, hope you're doing well and chat to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.